Have you ever experienced feeling embarrassed or judged during a discussion, meeting, or any conversations? Were you able to express this kind of emotion to someone whom you trust? How long have you been feeling this kind of emotion? These are the few questions that linger in our mind whenever we feel unsafe psychologically at work. As an HR practitioner for the past eight years, this is my passion, which is to promote psychological safety in the workplace. Today, I will be sharing to you about psychological safety, what is it all about, the importance, and what is the commitment in order to attain psychological safety in the workplace. What is psychological safety? Psychological safety, according to Dr. A Amy Edmondson, Edmondson, a Harvard Business School professor, it is a shared belief by members of a team that the team is safe for interpersonal risk taking. In other words, it is an employee's ability to voice their ideas without any inhibitions, without any having fear to be judged, to be recommended, or to be embarrassed at all. So, why do we need psychological safety in the workplace? First, because it promotes better creativity, it promotes supportive culture, it helps improve the engagement, and of course, it, pro it promotes higher trust, it builds trust. And when these components are present, the company retains employees, it decreases also the turnover rate. So, the other side, what will happen if there is no psychological safety in the workplace? What will happen to the employees? It will lead to inaccurate or delayed reporting. It will make them more stressed. It will make them more disengaged. It will um, ruin or stop, stifle their um, ideas, constructive feedback, and ultimately creativity. It will foster groupthink, but it will discourage diversity. And when this happens, it will fall back to the company. The company will become slow moving to progress or growth, be indecisive. It, they will be indecisive what the strat strategies, the best strategies that they can do. And also, lastly, the incapability to adapt to the change especially what is being dictated by the market. Therefore, as a result, and one of the issues that we have right now is a remote and hybrid work environments. And based on the research from Dale Carnegie, there are fewer issues that, that affects, and one of which is psychological safety. Because employees feel loss the sense of the belongingness is missing and the ability for them to admit mistakes and learn and analyze lessons from the mistakes that have been happening and giving and getting feedback all of these are being suppressed that's why it has been concluded based on the survey that hybrid workspaces discourage employees from speaking up so how are we going to foster psychological safety in the workplace? There are six tips for leaders that they need, that you need to do. So first is seek out feedback. How? By conducting employee survey, by uh, team meetings, one-on-one -on -one conversations. This will open up suggestions and feedback. Second, reevaluate your leadership style. No more authoritative or micromanagement style. You need to switch to be more consultative, more supportive approach to your team. Third, get a little vulnerable. Be open, be transparent, be an example to have this kind of attitude and they will open up as you soon 
you become open as well. Fourth, set stretch goals. Goals are meant to be achieved, but if, it, if they don't happen, this will lead to discouragement, disengagement, and demotivation. So you as a leader, you need to stretch those goals so that they will be more empowered, be more creative, and be more encouraged to achieve the goals that you have set for them. Fifth, ask more questions. Questions which are open-ended to help them explain more, to explore their ideas. And another thing that which is very important is the active listening. Make sure you focus or you have this constant eye-to-eye -eye contact. Also, avoid interruptions and summarize what you have talked about to ensure there is understanding. Then the last one is reflect on what you learn. It is important to know what works well, what didn't work well, and that's how you will find out what is the best approach to be done. And in addition, there are through three proven steps which will help foster this kind of culture. The first one is observe how teams suppress ideas or different opinions. So to make this happen, provide that space, that environment for them to share ideas and especially to thank them on how to promote and encourage them to, to share more ideas. The second is treat mistakes as easy to correct. Mistakes are opportunities, help them to resolve the mistakes instead of point finger the issues to them, whoever did the mistake. And lastly, show respect to opinions of others. This is a very important attitude because it promotes diversity and openness and growth to all the employees. And lastly, psychological safety is very, very powerful. But this is not a one quick strategy to fix. We need to be consistent, to be conscious, and really practice this culture, this type of culture. And you need to encourage your team to see you prioritizing support, transparency, and vulnerability. You need to let them feel more comfortable about voicing feedback, sharing criticisms, speaking with the biggest, brightest, and boldest ideas. Thank you.